What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Da Vinci Cases. All right, so the way this works is we've got a clinical case followed by a board style question. So we're going to go through the question stem, point out the relevant clinical findings, take a look at the question and the answer choices, and then kind of divert for a minute and go through the relevant concepts to answering the question. Then we'll come back and apply those concepts that we went over to answering the question. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another Da Vinci Cases. This is GI case eight, uh, our third pathology case for GI. So for this case, we've got a 63-year-old male with a past medical history of COPD, GERD, and coronary artery disease that visits the gastroenterologist's office for evaluation of dysphagia. The patient began experiencing dysphagia with solid foods about two months ago, and then the dysphagia has progressed, and now the patient experiences symptoms with both solids and liquids. So that's a key point there. Initially, this kind of started two months ago. They were just experiencing it with solid foods, and now it's progressed to a point where it's both solids and liquids. That's an important uh, detail to pay attention to. The patient has smoked one pack of cigarettes and drank eight beers per day for the past 30 years. So there are also obviously significant risk factors for cancers, especially GI cancers. So he is scheduled for endoscopy for further evaluation, and that's very typical. Uh, you know, someone with many risk factors, the dysphagia is getting worse, it's involving solids and liquids. As typical, they're going to work this up for malignancy, and the best way to do that is just to put a scope in and see. So the question is, which of the following pathological transformations has most likely affected the patient's distal esophagus? So really the key findings, as I've mentioned here, just to summarize this, we have a middle-aged male with several risk factors for esophageal cancer specifically, which is what the GI doctor is probably most concerned with here. GERD, again, it, it, GERD, it seems like kind of a mild thing. It's very common. If it's not treated adequately, and occurs over a long period of time, can actually put patients at risk for esophageal cancers we'll talk about. And then smoking and heavy alcohol use, like I said, puts you at risk for a number of cancers, especially GI cancers. And then the fact that he's experiencing this dysphagia that has been con continuing to get worse and initially started with solids and now occurs with both liquids and solids. So our first three answer choices, A, B, and C, all involve stratified squamous epithelium transitioning into simple columnar epithelium. Now, what separates these three answer choices is choice A, you have the last part of that transition is to esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. Choice B is where the columnar epithelium transitions into esophageal adenocarcinoma. And then choice C is where that simple columnar epithelium transitions into Borhoff syndrome. And then you have choice D, which is where you have simple columnar epithelium transitioning to squ stratified squamous epithelium and then eventually into esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. Choice E is simple cuboidal epithelium transitioning to stratified squamous epithelium and then eventually Mallory Weiss syndrome. So the correct answer choice is choice B, stratified squamous epithelium transitioning to simple columnar epithelium and then eventually transferring into esophageal adenocarcinoma. So this question requires knowledge of not only pathology but also anatomy and some histology as well. So we have a diagram to the left showing you the anatomy of the stomach and the esophagus joining with the gastric body there, thus forming the gastroesophageal junction, which you can see with the arrow there. This is also not only an important anatomical transition point, it's also an important histological transition point. And so you can see there with the other arrow with the diagram to the right, this is a histological section, courtesy of one of our collaborators, Lisa Lee, from the University of Colorado School of Medicine. And you can see that on the left, in the esophagus, you have stratified squamous epithelium. That is the native epithelium of the esophagus that's completely normal. And then in the stomach, you have simple columnar epithelium. And so you can see it's a transition point between these two epitheliums. And just keep this image in mind if you're taking a histology exam, that very frequently they will ask about this. So if we look at this, remember you have all this acid in the stomach. And what happens over time with gastroesophageal reflux is that you have spilling of that acid back into the esophagus. And so what you're doing is exposing this stratified squamous epithelium to a bunch of acid. Now, what's important to remember here is that the stomach epithelium is essentially designed to withstand the you know erosive effects and, and damaging effects of acid. It's used to it. That's the normal environment. The esophagus is not designed to withstand the damage of a bunch of acid. And so what happens is that it causes actually a transition or what's called metaplasia, which is when one type of epithelium converts into another. 
And so you have the stratified squamous cell epithelium over time as a result of chronic reflux, chronic insult from acid. It converts into simple columnar epithelium so that it can actually withstand and better be protective against that acid so it doesn't erode through the entire wall of the esophagus. What this condition is called is Barrett's esophagus, where you have this metaplasia into columnar epithelium, and this is a pre-malignant state. If this continues, it can actually transition into esophageal adenocarcinoma, and this is in the distal third of the esophagus, because this is the junction where the GE junction is. Now, there's other factors that can help accelerate this, tran this last part of the transition, and such as smoking and heavy alcohol use as well. So esophageal cancer, in a nutshell, there's two main types, squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell car carcinoma worldwide is by far the most common, and it's actually one of, the, uh, one of the most common primary cancers in developing countries. It predominantly occurs in the middle third of the esophagus, and the risk factors for that are similar. It, the way you think about that is it's over time, it's just chronic insults to the epithelium, so smoking, alcohol abuse, hot liquids, strictures, and achalasia. Adenocarcinoma you want to really associate with GERD. Squamous cell is not really associated with GERD. Adenocarcinoma is that, and the reason is GERD, and for, because of that, since GERD is so common in the United States, it's actually one of the most common primary cancers in the United States. So risk factors in addition to GERD are Barrett's esophagus, which is the most common, smoking, alcohol abuse, obesity, and achalasia. The clinical features of esophageal cancer are kind of what we're seeing, dysphagia with first solids and then liquids. You can also see, as you see with many cancers, unexpected weight loss. The treatment is pretty standard for, as we see a lot of cancers, surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. And unfortunately, the prognosis is not very good for this type of cancer. So coming back to the question, just to kind of run through the answer choices again. So the first answer choice, again, the first part is correct, stratified squamous epithelium convert, transitioning to simple columnar, but that doesn't transition into esophageal squamous cell carcinoma. Instead, it's answer choice B, which is where you have stratified squamous converting into simple columnar, and then eventually, which is Barrett's esophagus, and then it eventually converts into adenocarcinoma. The way you can remember that is that the epithelium of the remember it essentially converts into the epithelium of the stomach, and the epithelium of the stomach is very glandular, and adenocarcinoma is essentially a glandular cancer. Choice C, again, it's correct in the first part, stratified squamous epithelium transitioning to simple columnar, but this doesn't put you at risk for Borhoff syndrome, which if you recall is, a, is rupture of the esophagus, which is in the vast majority of cases actually caused by endoscopy. Um, it can also be seen in re people with retching and vomiting, people with bulimia or very severe alcoholics. Barrett's esophagus is not a predisposing factor for Borhoff syndrome. Choice D, this isn't correct. The esophagus epithelium is not simple columnar epithelium, so that, that isn't correct. And then again, with esophageal squamous cell carcinoma, is not caused by some type of transition. It's just, like we said, due to you know chronic insults to the epithelium. And the last choice, simply cuboidal epithelium, again, that's not right because the esophagus is stratified squamous. And then again, just Mallory-Weiss syndrome, just to review, consists of a mucosal tear in the proximal stomach and distal esophagus. And this is often caused by severe retching and vomiting. So what we have here is a patient with pretty classic risk factors, GERD, smoking, alcohol use for esophageal cancer. And what has most likely happened is that this, the native stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus has transitioned to simple columnar epithelium, which is a Barrett's esophagus, and then that puts the patient at risk to transitioning to esophageal adenocarcinoma. All right, that's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out all the Da Vinci Cases videos available on our YouTube channel and our website, dviacademy.com. The PDF notes for every Da Vinci Cases is also available on our website. Also be sure to check out our podcast, The Da Vinci Hour, 